the largest and most effective and most feared foreign lobby working for a foreign government doesn't have to register under the law. That's insane. So this is APAC is exactly what FAR is meant for. Today, Mr. Netanyahu has far more influence and control over what happens in Washington than President Biden. Washington is firmly under the control of Israel. I'm very worried about our position in the region and in the world. Israel is creating tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of, of people who are going to hate the United States. But we're told that it's essential to our national security to do that. Do you believe that? No, I don't see how it's strengthening our country. In fact, we're getting weaker by doing it. It's America not first. It's not a bad idea. Uh, and it should be the basic idea for our diplomacy, in my view. Correct me, Phil. We have no treaty of alliance with Israel. Am I right? You're absolutely correct. I mean, Israel, Israel isn't even a democracy. Could could Phil Giraldi or Andrew Napolitano uh, or anybody watching us that was not Jewish buy land in Jerusalem? I couldn't even step foot in Jerusalem without being detained, arrested, with no charges filed and held for as long as they want. You're not allowed to discuss the power of the Israeli lobby in America. That's proof right there. They control America. That's who's controlling free speech in this country. That's that's when I knew that, you know, they were the enemy and, and not there to help us. 34 men killed, 174 men wounded, and Congress just looked the other way. We have technology that we can see um, exactly who's in these locations and buildings. So they're targeting and bombing homes, knowing who and how many children were actually inside. My name is Josephine Gilbo. I'm a 17-year Army veteran. Having that background uh, as an intelligence officer and understanding what defense actually is, I can see clearly that this is not self-defense. The civilian casualties is catastrophic. They're targeting homes filled with children. The elite that sit in Capitol Hill sit there and lie over and over and over. I just want to highlight one of the biggest awakenings that I think I've had the last few weeks coming here and lobbying with the senators and the congressmen is just how corrupt our government is and that anyone that's in the military is simply just one chess piece that they use at their leisure for their own internal gain to protect their own internal assets and money. Well, I have Republicans who come to me on the floor and say, I wish I could vote with you today. Yours is the right vote, but I would just take too much flack back home. And I have Republicans who come to me and say, that's wrong what APAC is doing to you. Let me talk to my APAC person. By the way, everybody but me has an APAC person. What like, does that mean, an APAC person? It's like your babysitter, your APAC babysitter, who uh, is always talking to you for APAC. They're probably a constituent in your district, but they are, you know, firmly embedded in APAC. And every member has something like this? Every, I don't know how it works on the Democrat side. Uh, but that's how it works on the Republican side. Why have I never heard this before? It doesn't benefit anybody. Why, why would they want to tell their constituents that they've basically got a buddy system with somebody who's representing a foreign country? It, it doesn't benefit the congressman for people to know that, so they're not going to tell you that. So what's APAC? APAC is the American Israel Public Affairs Committee. Ostensibly, it's a group of Americans who lobby on behalf of Israel. They're for anything Israel. Um, and they're a very effective lobbying group. FARA, the Foreign Agent Registration Act, the law requires people who lobby on behalf of foreign governments to register. It's that simple. And this is the largest lobby in the United, most effective lobby in the United States on behalf of a foreign government. Are they registered with FARA? They are not, but they should be. The largest and most effective and most feared foreign lobby working for a foreign government doesn't have to register under the law. That's insane. So this is APAC is exactly what FAR is meant for. We just want to check where your money's coming from. Tell us where it's coming from, what you're spending it on. And if you are lobbying on behalf of a foreign country, are you being directed by, for instance, is Netanyahu speaking to your group, advising you on your next move? Today, Mr. Netanyahu has far more influence and control over what happens in Washington 
than President Biden. Washington is firmly under the control of Israel and its supporters in the United States. Absolutely. Yeah. To the point where support for the Israelis at this stage is effectively unconditional. So that's a big change. And I think first and foremost about the United States, and I, I'll be frank with you, I'm very worried about our position mm -hmm. in the region and in the world. Yeah. Because everyone knows that we ultimately hold all the cards when it comes to Israel. Mr. Netanyahu decided that this is a good time to strike at Gaza. The attack from Gaza essentially handed him an opportunity on a silver platter. Right. And we're beginning to find out that, yes, it was a terrible attack and terrible things were done, but not quite as, as it was originally described. That's right. You know, 40 babies didn't have their heads chopped off. Everyone wasn't raped and so forth. So on. now we're finding that it was a lot of friendly fire where inexperienced Israeli soldiers opened fire and, and accidentally killed Israeli citizens. Israel's creating tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of, of people who are going to hate the United States. And, and you know, they're going to hate Israel also. But because we're giving Israel the weapons to do what they're doing, we're creating a lot of people who hate us in this country. But we're told that it's essential to our national security to do that. Do you believe that? No, I don't see how it's strengthening our country. In fact, we're getting weaker by doing it. I'd like Mr. Blinken, Secretary of State Blinken, to provide a statement of U.S. objectives and the benefits we will gain from the policies he's espousing, not a list of benefits to Israel. Israel is a foreign country with foreign interests, foreign circumstances, and its own um, capacity to defy the United States on repeated occasions and, and chart its own course. And, and we just apparently are along for the ride in Mr. Blinken's perception. That's it's not good enough. It's America not. first is not a bad idea. Uh, and it should be the basic idea for our diplomacy, in my view. Could any other country in the world get away with this? You know, they've denied them food, they've denied them water, they won't let medicine come in, they've, they've cut off the electricity, they've destroyed the schools, they've destroyed the mosques, they've destroyed the hospitals. This former student of mine has, who texted me during the show the other day is a cousin was a 35-year-old head of pediatrics, MD, head of pediatrics at the Gaza City Hospital, slaughtered by a machine gun while tending to two babies not tending to hamas killers but tending to two babies correct me phil we have no treaty of alliance with israel am i right you're absolutely correct I mean, israel, israel isn't even a democracy could could phil giraldi or andrew napolitano uh, or anybody watching us that was not jewish buy land in jerusalem i couldn't even step foot in jerusalem without being detained arrested with no charges filed and held for as long as they want. Tells you who controls the country. Mm. You're not, a, the fact that we're having this discussion and we're on the edge, all right? We, everybody knows here, this is the edge. Oh yeah. Why are we on the edge? Because we're touching the third rail. We're breaking the taboo. You're not allowed to discuss the power of the Israeli lobby in America. That's proof right there, they control America. That's who's controlling free speech in this country. I said a few prayers and, uh, and then all of a sudden everything exploded. Two hours of pure hell. Napalm, burning fires, bombs, armor piercing bullets, rockets, cannons. I mean, we got so many holes blown in that ship from the rockets, it was ridiculous. I mean, it was divine intervention that the ship stayed afloat. Uh, the closer they got, I could tell and I could see the Star of David flags on it. Israeli defense forces. I don't know why they call them defense because they were attacking us. That's that's when I knew that, you know, they were the enemy and, and not there to help us. And our government still supports that theory that it was a mistaken identity. There was no mistake in who we were. You knew this wasn't a mistake. It was no accident. It was absolutely a deliberate attack. I still have visions of it to this day. I still see the stretchers that are being brought over, but more than that, I see the body bags. 34 men killed, 174 men wounded. There was blood everywhere, just blood everywhere. Terrible, just terrible. And Congress just 
looked the other way. The United States is Israeli relationship, which began at that time, is based on fabrication and lies. It's just a shame that our government is afraid, actually afraid to tell the truth about what happened on June 8th, 1967, and those that were responsible for those actions.